Project 2025 is over and the FBI is about to get involved, and this has nothing to do with them falsely filing as a 501c3 organization. Though, they did falsely file as a 501c3 organization, and multiple people are reporting them on the IRS website using Form 13909. But that's not what this one's about. Project 2025 is run by the Heritage Foundation, and the Heritage Foundation was hacked. Within the data packet, there is a lot of very interesting stuff that the FBI is going to want to investigate Ostapronto. What you're looking at at the bottom of the screen is a bunch of different IP addresses for people involved within the think tank. You can see the locations of those IP addresses. That's China. The Heritage Foundation was hacked and was apparently discovered to have ties to China. We're talking furries and fascists on this watch list. Now, given the fact that the Heritage Foundation falsely filed as a 501c3 organization, I highly doubt that they filed any of the forms to let people know that they were lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. But they appear to be lobbying on behalf of a foreign government, and considering how much they've been ranting and raving about China getting involved in our politics, this one's pretty funny. Now, as this is all public information now, I want to be very clear that these are things that you can easily find and verify yourself. And I encourage you to look further into this because this is one hell of a story. One hell of a story that has an added twist. The hackers are gay furry hackers that breached the Daily Signal, a site run by Heritage, and released two gigabytes of internal data that they dug up. The reason this hacktivist collective Siege Sec targeted Heritage Projects 2025 is because they're carrying out a campaign called Op Trans Rights. They targets government websites to disrupt efforts to enact or enforce anti-trans and anti-abortion laws. So Mike Howell, former Trump official and current executive director of Heritage's Oversight Project, reached out to the hackers to get answers. Mike Howell, would you like to meet virtually or send an emissary to meet in person? Vio, I would like to be left alone without my rights being threatened. Then Mike responds, are you aware that you won't be able to wear a furry tiger costume when you're getting pounded in the in the federal prison I put you in next year? Vio, such unprofessional language from an executive director. Would you mind if I shared this? Mike, please share widely. I hope the word spreads as fast as the STDs do in your degenerate furry community. Vio, we want to make a message and shine light onto who exactly supports the Heritage Foundation. We don't want anything more than that. Not money and not fame. We're strongly against Project 2025 and everything the Heritage Foundation stands for. Mike, that's why you hacked us? Just for that? Vio, yes, it should be obvious. That's all we want. Based on our history as a hacktivist group, we don't seek money. Mike, okay, listen to me closely. We're in the process of identifying and outing members of your group. Reputations and lives will be destroyed. Closeted furries will be presented to the world for the degenerate perverts they are. You cannot hide. Your means are minuscule compared to mine. You now can either turn yourself in or you can cooperate. So it was a bunch of chest pounding, not the other kind of pounding that he imagined that came from Howell. So even though Project 2025 has kind of been flying under the radar for a couple of years, Heritage finds its name in the middle of this race where Trump was forced to obviously lie about it. But the guy that threatened the country, if everyone doesn't accept a dictator, he gave him a pass. What do you take away from Donald Trump distancing himself from your project? Well, I first of all, thanks for the question. I think that if you consider that the Biden campaign has spent $15 million on attack ads, obviously primarily on President Trump, our standard bearer this year, but some millions of those have gone against Project 2025 in particular, then if you're running for president and you're trying to win not just any campaign, but what we think at Heritage is the most significant campaign in modern American history, then it makes sense that politically you want to pivot from that. There are no hard feelings from us at Project 2025 or Heritage about that. We love President Trump. So when you see President Trump say this and what you envision as being behind it tactically. Well, I, I think it's the, the sign of a great leader who understands he's in a, a terrific political news cycle. He's run a really good campaign from start up to this point. And the, the left's mis, mischaracterization of Project 2025 had become a liability. I think we, we've seen that really turn around in the last few days since that statement. So no hard feelings from any of us at Project 2025 about the statement, because we understand 
Trump is the standard bearer, and he's making a political, tactical decision there. Kevin still loves President Trump, sees him as the standard bearer of their promise to turn America into a fascist state. These kinds of obvious admissions of his knowledge and connections to this plan are happening because, as Roberts before promised, bloodshed, they feel that they have the courts. And once they feel that they can do whatever they want, they don't care if people know. They're planning on doing it anyway. But it's not like they were trying very hard to hide it before. Project 2025 is just a series of recommendations, beginning with uh, a big, thick book that you mentioned that we are making uh, to the next president, in this case, President Trump, in the hopes that, that he will uh, read our recommendations and agree with them. We think that he'll agree with a lot of our recommendations. Our country is going to hell. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. That was Stephen Groves, the former Trump White House deputy press secretary and the co-editor of Project 2025, talking about how sure he is that Trump will be on board. So like I said before, it's about time we stopped the charade of whether or not Trump has ever heard of the Heritage Foundation or this plan to dismantle the country. It's about time that even his supporters stop acting like they don't support the things that they're proposing. I mean, he proposed them when he was in the White House. The key part of Project 2025 that Adam's hitting on, I think, is the most important part for Americans to understand, is this reshaping of the federal government. And I saw the actual executive order at the end of the last administration ready to go that would remake every uh, civil servant into a political appointee and a loyalist to Trump. And it goes beyond Social Security and some of these technical things. It's the national security apparatus. It's our emergency management. It's FEMA. It's responding to natural disasters. Uh, pandemics. Those would all be our subject matters. The Dr. Fauci's of the world would be replaced with whatever loyalists he puts into those positions. This aspect might be what MAGA world and heritage are concerned with supporters discovering, that their overhaul of the government would be so sweeping that the people that they place in mundane but important positions, strictly based on their loyalty to Trump, may screw things up because they aren't qualified to work there since fealty is the only requirement. Do you buy what President Trump is saying no, about no. not knowing anything about it? No, of course he knows it. Look, he's, he's Heritage Foundation plays a very important role in his campaign. And let's also, quick aside, keep in mind, the Heritage Foundation recently flew the American flag upside down, which somehow is cool now to do, even though that used to be a very anti-American thing. So he knows, his people around him know, they're, they're deeply involved in this. And this is all about remaking the federal government, not just to be like a conservative federal government, but you think about what this does to competency. So if you wanna get a license to do whatever through the federal government, those people that do those licenses or put out your social security check or do those things that we require every day, they're talking about replacing them with folks that have no idea what they're doing because the other people that have been working there have not sworn an allegiance to Donald Trump. And what we know about Donald Trump is he only wants people around him that swear an allegiance to him, and that's it. 